Uh, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas joins us right now. Would you agree that it was a pretty a, a pretty thoughtful and very important discussion that you had with your your colleague from Vermont? Well, uh, Larry, good to be with you, and, and I would. I thought, I thought I thought it was terrific. I thought it was a lot of fun, <laughs> uh, and, and I thought it was more substance than, than than typically you get in 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 the world of political discourse. You know, most most political back and forth is done in in sixty and ninety second sound bites, and and to have two hours of substance on on an issue that really matters to people, matters to people's lives, to their families, which is health care. Uh, I, I think that was beneficial, and I think there was there there was some real clarity in 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 the different policy perspectives going forward. Yes, and actually to that end, what I'd like to do is play a portion of uh, Bernie Sanders when you were able to ask each other questions. He asked, I think, one of the most important fundamental values-based questions that is center to this conversation about health care in America and government's involvement in it. And I'd love for you to I, I know what you said last night, but I'd love you to expand on it in your own words right now. Listen sure. to Bernie Sanders. Is every American entitled, and I underlined that word, to health care as a right of being an American? Yes or no? Uh, Senator Cruz, it's a it's an important question because we're told that health care is a basic fundamental human right. So what's the response? Well, and, and, and Larry, that's right. That's what Bernie said last night, and it's what he said throughout the campaign season is is that, that, that health care is a right, and he wants the government to control uh, health care for everyone. And, and my answer is that the word right is something that the left – tosses about willy-nilly and 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 rights mean something very specific a right is something the government cannot do to you uh... it, it is not something that the government gives to you so so some of the examples that i talked about last night the first amendment free speech means the government cannot silence your speech it cannot censor your speech religious liberty means the government cannot restrict your right to 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 live and practice your faith and 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 worship god consistent with your faith and conscience the second amendment means the government cannot take away your right to keep and bear arms can't take away your guns uh... E each of those rights are protections against government powers that's what the Bill of Rights is all about, you know, as, as, as the Declaration of Independence put it, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, li liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Th th those are what rights are. What Bernie wants to define rights as is things that the government must pay for and give you. Right. Uh, and, and, and that is not... Uh, th th that is contrary to the very notion of a right. So I said, look, you want to talk about rights concerning health care? You have a right to access to health care. You have a right to choose your own doctor. The government shouldn't be preventing you from choosing your own doctor. And, and what I turned and responded to Bernie, if you want to talk about health care as a right, th then you should be very dismayed that Obamacare, which you, Bernie Sanders, help authored, has resulted in over six million Americans losing their health insurance plans, losing the the right to access their doctor. That 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 is the government actively interfering in your liberty, your ability to take care of of your own health and your and your family. And and I got to tell you, Bernie didn't have an answer to that other than just. Uh, uh, promised the government would, would control and give us everything. Well, and I have to commend you also, Senator Cruz, on a, a very important point that you made, which was, listen, Br Bernie and I agree that the uh, Washington is broken, uh, the government is corrupt, the parties have special interests that are paying yeah. for all these things. Why on earth would you want to then give that same corrupt, broken government so much control over these things? And and that really is the, the basis of the debate that you're facing right now in the U.S. Senate. Uh, it, it, it is the, the fundamental divide we saw last night on, on Obamacare is a difference of philosophy, that, that Bernie Sanders and the Democrats believe that government should control your health care, that government should be in charge, should decide what health care you can get, should decide how much you can get, and who can provide it. And, and uh, what I think is the right answer and solution is that you should be in charge, that I trust you and your doctor to make, make health decisions about yourself, about your family, about your future, and it shouldn't be government getting between you and your doctor. We should have patient-centered reform. We should repeal Obamacare, which I believe Congress is going to do, 
and we should have patient-centered reform that give you more options, you more flexibility, and you more control without government taking away your freedom. So uh, that said, and I think that you you responded to this this charge that that health care is a basic human right and a very good right, and I wish all of your colleagues were able to do that when they go on cable news, uh, but, but the fact that they've got you out there doing it is a great step. However, it may not be a right, but is it good public policy for the federal government to be involved in in health care, in providing or at least facilitating access to health care on behalf of either all Americans or those Americans who are having some problem accessing it, either because of uh, pre-existing conditions or because of economic hardships? Well, look, th- th- there is no doubt we need health care reform. I-, I-, I don't know of anybody in this debate who argues that once we repeal Obamacare, we're done. Uh, there are a lot of problems in the health care marketplace, a lot of problems caused by decades uh, of the federal government's active uh, involvement in health care. And, and, and I think the reforms that we need to pursue are reforms that expand patient choice, that expand competition, that empower you and disempower the government from, from intruding in the doctor-patient relationship. And let me give you some specific examples Please. where there's widespread agreement among Republicans. Uh, and indeed, among the American people, there's overwhelming support for these reforms. Number one, you, the patient, should be able to purchase health insurance across state lines. You should be able to purchase insurance. Right now, that's illegal. What that would do is it would create a 50-state national marketplace, which would drive down costs dramatically. What the Democrats have done with Obamacare is jacked up premiums, jacked up deductibles, so people are paying more for worse coverage, fewer doctors, and less choice. That is exactly the wrong direction we need to go. We need instead more affordable uh, uh, policies, lower premiums, the choice of lower deductibles and more doctors, and all of that occurs through competition. So we ought to allow people to purchase across state lines, number one. Number two, we should expand health savings accounts so you can save in a tax-advantaged way for more routine health care needs. And number three, we should delink health insurance from employment so that if you lose your job you don't lose your health insurance but it travels with you from job to job that it's personal it's portable it's affordable and all of those are reforms that empower you the patient and disempower government yeah there was a dramatic moment last night senator cruz where you showed a map of the united states and yep. showed those areas that were hardest hit by the affordable care act by obamacare and then juxtapose that with the electoral college map where yep. the the counties that went for republicans versus democrats in the presidential election why don't you explain for those who missed this exactly what that map tells us about the the ramifications of the Affordable Care Act politically in America. Right. 70% of the counties in America, consumers have a choice of either one or two health insurance companies on the Obamacare exchanges. Obamacare has destroyed competition. And, and if you look at those counties, and what I held was a map of all those counties color-coded to the ones where you only have one or two choices, uh, those, those are predominantly the counties that went strongly for Trump because people are hurting. And, and a lot of the discussion last night was all of the people who have lost their doctors, who have lost their health insurance, whose premiums have skyrocketed. And remember, Obama made three promises. When, Ob- when Obamacare was being pitched, he said, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan. If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. And he promised that the average family's premium would drop $2,500 a year. Every one of those promises turned out to be an absolute falsehood. The, 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 the promise, if you like your plan, you can keep your plan, was named by PolitiFact, a left-leaning liberal organization. Yeah. They called it the lie of the year of 2013. Uh, premiums, not only did premiums not drop $2,500, the average family's premiums have risen $5,000. And, and Bernie and the Democrats have no answer to that. And and what do you – well, the only answer they, that I've seen from them is, well, without the Affordable Care Act, those premiums would have gone even higher. <laughs> and, and, and they take no responsibility. You know, I asked Bernie last night. When President Obama promised your premiums would drop $2,500, was he telling the truth? Hmm. To knowingly lie to the American people on something as important as health care is a big, big deal. Yeah. 
And, and, and listen, if it had ended up that premiums had dropped $2,300 instead of $2,500, you could say, okay, he made a good faith representation. It didn't produce everything he wanted, but he was trying. Yeah. That's not what happened. They, they didn't drop a penny. They rose $5,000. That's a $7,500 delta. And, and the reason it matters so much, you know, Bernie last night was arguing we should expand Obamacare to have socialized medicine, Medicaid for everybody. And he's making the exact same promises. He's saying, gosh, your cost will go down, you'll get more access. And every one of those promises proved to be dramatically false with Obamacare. If you look at every place on earth where socialized medicine has been implemented, there have been waiting lists, there's rationing. The elderly are told, no, you don't get that hip replacement. No, you don't get that knee replacement. Your cataract surgery, if you get it, is going to be delayed 200 days. And, and, and that rationing is what the Democrats are proposing. I don't think we should put the government in charge of choosing what health care, Larry, you and your family can get. That's your choice with your doctor. You want to talk about a right? That's the right for you to choose and not government. Our guest is Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, and uh, I'd love to, to just get your reaction to a couple of other issues that are out there right now, the things that have been on my mind. We're now uh, several weeks into the Trump administration. I know that when you were running for president, uh, you said on day one you would tear up that Iran nuclear deal, and yes. then President Trump said something similar to that. It's still in place. What's happening there, and, and what can be done to, uh, to, to get rid of this nuclear deal? Well, I, I think Iran and the threat of a nuclear Iran poses the single largest national security threat to America and anywhere on Earth. And this deal was a, a terrible deal. It was negotiated by the Obama administration. It's a deal designed to allow Iran to cheat. And, and, and I think the deal, if it remains in force in its current form, will only accelerate Iran's acquiring nuclear weapons. But, of course, as you know, the president has the ability right now to, to stop this deal. What, what's, what's happening? It, he does. You know, what I can tell you is the national security team that President Trump has put together is a very, very strong team. General Flynn, national security advisor, someone I know well, I respect. Uh, General Mattis, the defense secretary, is, is a, a serious, experienced uh, leader. Uh, Rex Tillerson, our Secretary of State, has, has negotiated complex deals all over the globe. And, and I think the team that is surrounding the president is clear-eyed about the threats, mm. is focused directly on the threats of Iran. They've announced new sanctions on Iran. And, 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 and I think they're looking at this threat seriously, and, and I'm working closely with them and will continue to work closely with them to do everything humanly possible to stop Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. All right. And finally, I'm, I'm told in this town, and I know, listen, I've, I've followed you enough over the last several years to know that you get frustrated with how things are done on Capitol <laughs> Hill. Uh, I, I'm told that they can't uh, walk and chew gum at the same time, that this Obamacare thing, that's occupying all the time. Uh, and yet, uh, many Americans who voted for Donald Trump were waiting for some very fundamental tax reform. Uh, Matt yep. Drudge, of the Drudge Report. He even tweeted out, listen to this, you may not have seen this, he just tweeted earlier today, the Republican Party should be sued for fraud. No discussion of tax cuts right now. What's happening with regard to tax reform? Well, tax reform is critically important, and, and, and I believe we are going to deliver on it and deliver in this, this first year of the Trump administration. Uh, the challenge is the Democrats right now, they're angry, they're in denial, and they're obstructing everything. Yeah. So they've been blocking Trump's cabinet nominees. We're going to confirm every one of them, but it's, it's, it's slower than it should be because the Democrats are engaged in obstruction. At this point, this is the longest to confirm a cabinet of any administration since George Washington. We're going to get that done. They're also likely to filibuster virtually everything, which means for us to get meaningful things done, we have to use procedural vehicles that can be done with 51 votes. The main one that we can do with 51 votes, which means it can't be filibustered, is what's called budget reconciliation. It's a specific statutory process. We're in the middle of budget reconciliation right now. We are using that as the vehicle to repeal Obamacare. So that's the first fight on budget reconciliation. We're going to do a second reconciliation later this year, either the summer or fall. That is intended to be the vehicle for tax reform. I hope it's also the vehicle for Dodd-Frank, for taking out the disaster that is Dodd-Frank. And I am pressing 
congressional leadership and, and, and the new administration with tax reform. Let's be big. Let's be bold. What I'd like to see is a simple flat tax and abolishing the IRS. Yeah. I'm confident we will do something significant and meaningful on tax reform and, and, and what I am urging every one of the players is, is, is let's not play small ball. Let's do something that really brings back millions of jobs, that raises wages, that gets government off our back. That's what I'm going to continue pressing for. It's what I hope we do. Lord knows Team Obama, Pelosi, and Reid did not play small ball, and uh, and you guys are spending all your time trying to undo what they did, so uh, why not? Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, always good to have you, sir. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Larry. Take care. God yes. bless. And we look forward to talking to you on the main stage at CPAC Thank coming up. This month. Yes. Bye-bye.